seasonal points what are they what you can use them for and they don't have to be just for halo reach and how can you earn them the fastest way possible well in this video i'm going to give you all the details <laughs> How's it going everybody? Kevin here once again giving you another gameplay commentary. Today we're talking about the season points and how that system works and what you can do to gain your seasonal points faster and what you can use them for and how you can use them. This is a little complicated. So guys, if you like these news informational videos, please make sure to tap that like button or tips and trick kind of videos because it lets me know you want to see some more content like this. Leave a comment down below what your thoughts are. If you experience any other kind of ways to grind through these XP gains even better, let me know in the comment section down below. I do read all the comments and try to reply to the most as well. And if you're new to the channel or missing any content from me, make sure you tap subscribe guys because you keep you updated with everything going on in Halo. So we're going to be talking about the seasonal points, something implemented with the bringing of reach to the MCC brand new unlocking progression system as you can see right here uh, currently on season one uh, each game is going to have its own season so for season one we have halo reach i currently have 20 unlocks i've been grinding out the double xp gains pretty hard guys and so i wanted to tell you guys what kind of play this you can also uh, jump in and play to help optimize your xp gains the best and so uh, you can obviously get these seasonal points. Now you can also just hold on to them. That's what I've been doing because I know I'm not like crazy into the customization and reach. I like it, but it's like, you know, I can just wait until I get around to doing stuff to unlock, all, unlock all of the things I want to do. Uh, but the thing is also, is say if you just don't like Halo Reach, you don't really care much for these unlocks, you can save them for the unlocks for next season. And then you can see those season points for the CE season that should be coming around, um, I guess it'll probably be in February, maybe something like that. Uh, so you can hold on to them and just unlock everything right away, which would be kind of an interesting thing to do. Uh, you gain these, uh, and then you can all, if you want to save those points and just hop back between the different seasons, you can use your season points uh, whenever. So it's a universal currency for your unlocks within the season of each game, basically. Uh, so Halo Reach, a lot of it's going to be armor customization and just all the general customization options you had back in the original Reach. And then Season 2 comes around, then you'll be able to unlock things the same kind of way. I'm guessing probably it's still in a linear kind of path uh, using your universal currency of seasonal points. You can unlock things from that season. And if you're like, well, actually I won't go back and do Reach, you can hop back and do that season. Or you can just completely skip CE and then just save all of your points and unlock everything that's coming for Halo 2 Anniversary. So that's how it kind of works out for that. Uh, we don't know what's coming in next season, guys. So, yeah, keep in mind that. I'm going to just continue keep playing MTC and Reach because I love this game. I'm having so much fun. So here we go, guys. I'm going to go into how to maximize your gains to get as many seasonal points as possible. Okay, guys. So like the previous video, I talked about how to gain XP as fast as possible. This also tie into earning your seasonal points as possible because as soon as you rank up to the next level, you unlock a new seasonal point and then uh, more and more and more. Obviously, the later on you get into that, what you call prestige now, uh, the longer it takes to rank up, but the earlier levels are pretty quick. So you gain a lot of seasonal points really fast and then it kind of trickles and it resets and kind of repeats that all over again. So I put together a list of uh, 30 different matches I played of various game modes. You can kind of understand what the XP gains are going to be. Within 30 games, I gained 347,500 XP, which roughly equates just under 1,200 XP per game. Now, uh, with double XP going on right now, you definitely want to jump on that until J January 6th. It's going to be double XP, so I've been really grinding it, guys, on the XP gains here. But these are these are XP points uh, without the double XP. But obviously, you can assume if you're playing right now, just divide that in half, and that's what the normal XP gains. Would be. And so uh, I've tried a lot of different kind of modes, like in social, uh, invasion, heroic firefights, uh, some hardcore matches, infection, SWAT, stuff like that. Try to optimize to see what how uh, pays out better. Because in Halo 5, we had def definitely had modes that paid out better XP. They paid out better rec points within the amount of time frame you played. So I wanted to see if that's something similar happened now with MTC. And from my findings, not so much. Uh, you can see right here, uh, these are all the social game types that I played together. So like uh, King of the Hill, Slayer, SWAT, 
I, I earn just over 10,000 XP per game. Uh, we move over to Infection. I played three games of that, just under 10,000. I'm sure if you're a little bit better or knew what you're doing, I don't really know what I'm doing when playing Infection. So I'm pretty uh, average at that. So roughly about, you know, roughly around 10,000. Uh, play some hardcore matches. Uh, again, roughly around 10,000. Now, it does also help. Um, you do get uh, three different kinds of XP gains. You get match completed, performance, and teamwork. The longer the match is, generally the more points you get for match completed. Performance will max out at 8,000 normally. Uh, right now it's at 16 because of double XP. And that's generally if you finish like kind of like top half of your team. I think it's generally when you get the uh, the performance boost right there. And obviously you do different things for your team. You gain more teamwork points. Uh, so uh, I've had games where I've probably earned like 20,000 XP on a non double XP game because it was like a super long CTF game I played and I just you know did really well and uh, you know kicked ass and stuff like that. So keep that in mind as well. Um, I found that Invasion actually ended up being a pretty good playlist. As you see, I had uh, about eight games of Invasion right here, averaged just under 13,000 XP. Now, invasion, invasion games do take a bit longer at times. Uh, but it, just, it all depends on how quick or how efficient your team is. Sometimes they can last pretty long. Sometimes they can be pretty short. As you can see, I had a short game right here. I got just uh, just over 7,000. I had a longer game where I kicked ass and had all, just under 20,000 XP. So if I didn't have this outlier, lower XP, this actually would be probably more like 13,000 XP per game, which would be really great. So uh, with obviously knowing which game was, it deal out the more XP, the more efficient you can be with your game time. Now, obviously, invasion can take quite a long time, and um, also it can be a little bit harder to find matches because it being ranked and also a larger game mode that's a little bit more niche. Uh, your best, your best bet, I would say, actually, is probably to play SWAT because you can still earn roughly 11 to 12, 10 to 12, 12 to 10,000 XP per match. While SWAT games generally are about half the time of Slayer matches. The Slayer matches are anywhere from seven. 10 minutes on average, or SWAT games are anywhere from four to six minutes, I would say, on average, sometimes seven minutes. And so you can get through a lot more games playing SWAT than you could playing Slayer. Obviously, that's kind of like a nitpicky, kind of like minor improvement on the whole thing. Uh, but just saying that that is something you can do. But ultimately, it's all just kind of comes down to just playing the game in your unlocks, in your tokens, and just having a good time. Uh, there really isn't like an obvious most optimal thing you gotta do when it comes to gaining XP, it seems like in Halo Reach. Uh, it's all kind of evened out, which is good. I'm glad to see that. Uh, Cause that's how I feel like it should be. And um, you know, it's really great. I've been having a lot of fun like, grinding out all these unlocks. As you can see I'm just at 20 points. I'm just kind of just going through and unlocking everything right now. So I'm super excited about this guys. Hopefully this video helped you understand what seasonal points are as a universal currency for your unlocks for each season, which is going to come with each game. You have a season a season themed around it. So if you don't like Halo Reach, you don't care about their customization, save all your seasonal points and wait for the CE one. Or if you don't like CE, wait till the Halo 2 one or Halo 3 or 4 or something like that. Uh, so just keep that in mind while you're uh, spending these points. You don't have to spend them right here. You can spend them in different seasons, and if you didn't like those seasons, you can hop back and spend them in this. I uh, just want to let you guys know how that whole process works. So, and there currently is no word when it comes to what will be in the upcoming seasons for Combat Evolved, for Halo 2, Halo 3, Halo 4, and so on. Uh, though I know that we're assuming probably a lot of nameplates. Uh, don't know much about customization or extra content. Uh, 343 is looking to add more content into those games. Uh, that's all they've mentioned about that. So, um, you know, if you want to save your points for that, go for it. Or if you want to just get your unlocks in reach, go for it right then. If you guys like these informational kind of videos, please make sure you tap that like button because it lets me know you want to see some more content like this. Leave a comment down below if you've learned anything when it comes to getting your unlocks in Halo Reach or any of the uh, you know, pr process of what how to unlock your stuff, fa your stuff faster because I would definitely like to know as well. If you're new to the channel or miss any content from me, check out the videos on the screen right now. Keep you up to date with everything going on in Halo. Don't forget to subscribe people and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.